I don't know if you all remember a couple of weeks ago, there was this song. It may have even been last week, but the phrase in it was that there's nothing better than you. Just keeps playing through in my mind. It just keeps resonating really in my heart. As I'm looking at that, I'm reminded of this idea. It's from Isaiah chapter six. I'm just going to read part of that to you and I really want you to catch it. I really want you to grab a hold of this today. It says Isaiah chapter six, verse one, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. It's really a simple way of saying, hey, there was this one time, this specific time where I saw God. And as he goes on, he talks about how he's seated on a high and lofty throne and the hem of his robe filled the temple and seraphim were standing above him and they each had six wings and they had covered their faces and they covered their feet and they flew. And you may be saying, I don't even know what seraphim are. Well, We believe they're angels. He goes on and says, and one called to another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of armies. His glory fills the whole earth. The foundations of the doorway shook at the sound of their voices and the temple was filled with smoke. The reality is I would love to dive into each one of those thoughts and explain each one of those and what they mean. But we don't have time to do that. What I want you to do is grab this thought. When Isaiah saw God, he was filled with awe, consumed with awe. It overwhelmed him. And it brings me to this thought. I don't know if you all have heard that old famous song, I Could Only Imagine. I love it. But I oftentimes think, what would I do I saw God, what would I do? And that song I can only imagine comes to my mind. And then as I read this, I really think I can't even imagine. There's no way to imagine. Look at how Isaiah responded when he had been filled with awe by seeing God. He says, then I said, now think about that for a second. Who is the I? The I is Isaiah. Who is Isaiah? Well, he's one of the greatest prophets we know from the Old Testament. He's the very mouthpiece of God. Not only is he a mouthpiece of God as a prophet, but he's a mouthpiece of God to the king of God's chosen nation, of God's chosen people. Like this is not just Isaiah. This is Isaiah who God has selected to go and speak to the king of his people. All of the promise, all of the beauty, all of the intentions. That's what Isaiah was there for. And Isaiah said, when he saw God, woe is me. For I am ruined. Now that word ruined is literally in Hebrew, dama. It means to cease, to cut off, be destroyed, perish, to be cut off, to be undone. My son would say obliterated. He would say just absolutely gone. I look at it and I just see what it really means is absolutely disintegrated. To be no more that what you were is absolutely ruined. That's what his response was. When he saw God, it wasn't, let me sing you a song or let me show you how good I am or how pretty I am or what I can perform for you. No, it was when he saw God, everything about him was disintegrated, gone, not worthy. He goes on to say, why? Because I am a man of unclean lips. Think about it. The mouthpiece of God saying, I don't have lips that are clean enough. He's got the cleanest lips in all the land. He's got the lips chosen to represent God. He says, they don't even touch your holiness. And I live among a people of unclean lips. God's very people, God's very chosen ones. He's saying, They can't compare to you, God. And because my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of armies, 
I've seen God. Here's what I want us to really dwell on as we get ready for this week's sermon. This idea that when we see God, it changes everything. We don't see God and add him into our life. We don't see God and think, oh yeah, that'll be a powerful supplement to my life. No, when we see God, we are overwhelmed with his character, with his being, with his might, with his grandeur. And suddenly we recognize that we are not any of those things. We are not worthy of any of those things. We realize that our lives, everything that we knew before is disintegrated and as we see God suddenly our life is no longer wrapped around the false promises that we knew before the former things but suddenly is wrapped around the person of God ironically we go from being completely disintegrated to being somebody who's completely integrated around one thing, and that's God. I hope you see him.